Well, the mass hysteria surrounding the coronavirus outbreak continues to ramp up. I want to take a break from my usual series of attempting to rebuild society and see if I can salvage this current one. So supplies on things like hand sanitizers become more and more rare. I wanted to see if it was possible to produce my own using the unfortunately named Corona beer. While panic buying reaches new heights and supplies start to become more and more rare, this truly emphasizes the importance of our mission of our channel. An understanding of the process that makes the products we use every day becomes suddenly more important when regular supply is disrupted and regular ready-made products become scarce. Even being able to go just one step back allows you to buy different ingredients to make these that might not be as scarce and opens up a lot more of possibilities and less scarcity. And if it does end up being worst case scenario, we show you how to fully produce things starting all the way back from the natural source in case all of society ends up failing, which it's not going to. We previously produced a video on producing pretty much every type of soap, literally starting from just rocks and seeds. Also covered a wide variety of disinfectants, such as a form of bleach that can be produced relatively easily, which is salt and a DC adapter. Having knowledge of how to make things and why they work the way they do is incredibly important in times like this. Since we haven't covered a commodity like hand sanitizer before, I wanted to use this excuse to kind of explore the topic a little bit deeper and try and take a product like Corona and produce hand sanitizer. When life gives you discount Corona, make hand sanitizer. So let's crack open a cold one and get disinfected. First up, the myth that people are confusing Corona beer with the coronavirus is actually a complete myth and is a misrepresentation of a study that just showed general interest in the beer is down, likely because a lot of people are in quarantine. Also doesn't help that the beer is pretty bad tasting. The word Corona means crown or halo in Latin and many Latin based languages like Spanish. The current pandemic, more accurately named COVID-19, contains the coronavirus name because the group of viruses appear to have a crown when viewed in an electric microscope caused by the outside of a virus having club-shaped protein spikes. CDC recommendations highly stress hand washing and hand sanitizer for disinfecting your hand. If you wanna make your own soap, we've already done a video on that. In order for a hand sanitizer to be effective at killing viruses like the coronavirus, at least 60% alcohol is needed. Alcohol works as a disinfectant through a process called denaturation. It has a unique property of the molecules having both water and fat-loving attributes, which allows it to break down the protective membranes of bacteria and virus, effectively destroying them. There are many different forms of alcohol, but the main ones are methanol, ethanol, and isopropanol. Methanol has the least antiseptic properties, so is rarely used for that purpose. It's also the compound that makes the distillation of alcohol for consumption pretty dangerous, as it can get concentrated to toxic levels that cause blindness or death. Ethanol is a primary alcohol produced through the fermentation of sugars and starches, something we've covered many times in the past. Also frequently used in hand sanitizers is isopropanol, which is most commonly produced from petroleum. Corona beer, like many light beers, has only 4.5% alcohol by volume, and that's not quite strong enough to actually disinfect anything. You need at least 60% alcohol. So we're gonna to need to do a process called distillation. Without a proper permit, distillation of alcohols is actually quite illegal and can potentially be very dangerous as alcohol is flammable. We'll be making a few precautions to make sure we are able to do this legally. So I definitely do not recommend trying to attempt this in any way. This is intended just purely for educational purposes. You are much better off buying already distilled beverages like Everclear or other high concentrations of alcohol that you don't have to distill. And then you can just mix that with the other ingredients you're gonna be using to produce your own. That is the much more realistic way to do this. So do not attempt to recreate this unless you have the proper permit or the government has completely dissolved, which is probably not gonna happen. To prevent yourself from getting a case of Corona, you'll have to go get yourself a case of Corona. Most straightforward way to do a distillation like this is a, just a basic chemistry kit. We have a boiling flask here inside the mantle that will heat it up to the desired temperature. The alcohol will evaporate first at around 79 degrees Celsius. And then we have the column set up here that will force the evaporate through it. And then we have cold water being cycled through this tube and that will cause the alcohol to condense and come out the bottom flask. So if we watch the temperature and keep it just below 100 degrees Celsius, we should get pretty much just alcohol. Once it starts to get towards 100 degrees, that means it's starting to evaporate some of the water and we'll get an impure result. And then once you do this once, you wanna do it a few times. 
So not everybody has the advantage of having a full chemistry set back at home. So I want to try and do more of an improvised method using some household items. So one of the ways I'm going to try is using uh, a pot, a bundt pan, and some bowls to try and make a makeshift one, but basically following the same concept. I found it as a method for water distillation, for purifying water, which is also a useful ability to have. In theory, it should work, so let's try it out. All right, so this basically works in the exact same way as the chemistry set, just all vertical. So at the bottom, we have the beer and the pot, which is slowly being heated to just the boiling point of alcohol, which will then evaporate, and it'll go through the little hole in the bump pan and collect at the top of the glass bowls on top. And there it'll be trapped until it starts to cool where it's farther from the heat. And it'll condense on the surface of the bowl where we'll then roll down the edges and collect in the bunt pan. A little temperature probe in here. So I'm just gonna monitor the temperature, make sure it stays below the boiling point of water. We should get relatively pure ethanol. Um, overall, this isn't the most efficient method as there's a lot of leakage through the cracks where some of the alcohol vapors will escape. But it should do pretty well for a makeshift distiller and we should get a, a relatively pure ethanol in the bun pan. Carefully monitored this and checked uh, once it started to reach the boiling point of water, took it off at that point, and the end result was actually pretty good. It still has a fair amount of water in it, so running it through a few more times to really distill it down would be ideal. Um, but in case you don't have a bun pan like this, if I try using some other kitchen household items and uh, like a teapot and see if we can rig something else up, uh, a different method. Thanks, Kit. Maybe you want some beer? So then for another option, to try to distill it, we have a uh, teapot here. Just gonna tape a tubing onto the end of it, and then inside of it should collect the ethanol vapors as they evaporate. We'll go through the tube, and then probably put some ice around it to help it cool. Then at the end should come liquid ethanol. All right, so a little change of plans. Uh, the tubing might not be up to par for the high temperature we're gonna reach, so I swapped it out. This is actually from a wind chime. It's a steel tube. Found an old cork. Just gonna shove that in, drill the hole in it, or then I'll wrap the whole thing in duct tape and hopefully seal any potential holes. And then a pack of ice cubes to put on the tube to help chill it. And then it should condense at the other end of the tube. Let's put the beer in and give it a shot. Okay, so it looks like it actually worked out pretty good. The duct tape has held up under the heat. I got a nice condensation here, got a nice yield. Um, ideally, you'd run this through a few more times to really distill it down to just the ethanol. Using any of these methods, you should be able to collect roughly 200 milliliters of close to pure ethanol from a 12 pack of Corona. Now I have a few different versions of distillation that I've completed in various stages. But the biggest challenge with actually trying to do this yourself, if you were to do that, which again, I would not recommend, is that uh, you don't really know the exact concentration. You want at least over 60% for it to be effective, ideally around 70%, because you can also be too concentrated and then it's not as effective. I'm gonna explore a couple different ways of measuring here. Easiest way is to just set on fire, and if it burns, it's over 50% alcohol. Otherwise, there's also the option of a little meter like this guy, which measures the actual density of the liquid, gives you an actual measurement of how much alcohol is in it. So let's give it a shot on each of these and see how concentrated they are. So this one, which was just a first distillation, was only about 30% alcohol. It was a little bit better at 40. And then this one's at 75 after a few batches through the distillation. Ideally, in theory, we can get it up to about 95% through just distillation. But this should be strong enough for what we're gonna do, hand sanitizer. We're aiming for about 70%, so we just want to dilute it only by 5%. But we don't want to use straight alcohol, so we're gonna add a, another compound to kind of make it a little bit more of a gel and a little bit easier on the hands. CDC also highly recommends isolating yourself to lower the chances of spreading the disease, even if you don't think you are sick or no one has been infected in your city yet. My recommendation is to cozy up at home and subscribe to your favorite YouTuber and catch up on all their videos. One of particular use could be one that teaches you how to rebuild society, then get a little hope that even in the worst case scenario, we can rebuild ourselves. Check out our post reset playlist as we build ourselves back up from the stone age and up into the bronze age. In fact, we are actually reaching the first recorded evidence of distillation at around 3000 BCE, which was actually the original inspiration for this video. So we'll be covering the production of our own distilled beverages using only the technology and tools from the Bronze Age. So be sure to subscribe and check out all of that. While the majority of the world is currently quarantined and practicing social distancing, we wanted to do a live stream next Monday evening to help provide some extra content and entertainment during these unprecedented times. So join us on Monday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. Central Time. If you have any requests for what we do during the live stream, let us know in the comments.
In addition to just the alcohol, there's oftentimes some sort of gelling agent that's used to kind of make it a little bit thicker. So you actually rub it on your hands and stuff and make it a little bit less harsh. One item you can use is aloe. I previously used these plants for sunscreen. They've just been sitting around waiting for another use. People are not hoarding these. Still available at the grocery store last I checked to actually harvest it. Just gotta cut it open, scrape it out, and it's just the contents of the leaves. Kinda cool. Gooey. First we have our ethanol, we have our aloe, and I'm just gonna throw in the lime just to add a little bit of scent and flavor to, not flavor, do not drink this, <laughs> scent. Um, so you don't smell like an alcoholic. Make it a little bit more pleasant. And then I'm gonna mix them all together. I'm gonna do it at exact ratio so we can stay above the 70% alcohol. So it can still be an effective disinfectant. So we got about 179 grams of ethanol, roughly 75% alcohol. And then we have some aloe, so that'll maybe nine grams and uh, just a little bit of lime and we'll make a mixed drink, but you do not drink. Just a hint of lime. one 12 pack of Corona produced one bottle of hand sanitizer. And in most situations, this is a very ineffective and expensive way to do it. But with the uh, shortages, actually could be cheaper. I mean, a 12 pack hand sanitizer has been going for up to like 65, 75, $85. Um, so in this unique situation we are in right now, this is actually a cheaper way to produce it. That being said, it's not really recommended to actually do this because it's both illegal and dangerous. World Health Organization actually has a document explaining the proper ratios to add to it. They also add things like hydrogen peroxide and glycerin, which help improve both as disinfectant and as a hand feel. Could have added glycerin. It is something I have made in the past during our soap video, but uh, opted not to because we had the aloe. I made paper towel. So we got one made, hypothetically. In fact, it's possible to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this. At this point, we've all heard a lot about this virus. It's had a very large impact on our lives. So uh, this is probably gonna be the only video we do that's directly relevant to the actual coronavirus outbreak. At this point, we're all kind of probably getting a, a little tired of all the coronavirus. It's like the only thing you can talk about. So moving forward, going back to our main series. Highly recommend you subscribe and check them out. It's a great thing to watch while you're self-quarantine. And we're just gonna keep on producing videos for as long as we can. Hopefully everybody can enjoy this. Stay calm, uh, wash your hands, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.